She hates it, but she's used to it. So it is what it is. But anyway. All right. Let's jump into this thing. Do it. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Bar. I am your host, Devin Grogans, here with co-host Tommy John. And we got an awesome guest lined up for you today. It is both of our coaches, but nonetheless, a great mentor, great person, and somebody that's been in the game for a long time. So we're going to talk a little bit about who he is. I'll introduce him here in a second. Um, but again, this is Beyond the Bar. So you can go to a lot of different places to find out about drugs, to find out about training, to find out about peaking strategies. We will talk some of that, but we're peeling the curtains back and going beyond the X's and O's. So today, our guest is none other than the Skip Hill. Um elite FTS writer, uh, prep coach, transform transformographer, which I love that word. Um, <laughs> but uh, Skip, welcome to the show. Appreciate you guys having me. Transmogrify. Yeah. You guys know where, you know what it came, you know what it comes from, right? Calvin and Hobbes. Ah, there we go. <laughs> another Calvin and Hobbes fan. Yes, oh, it's yeah. the, uh, the cardboard box. They mm -hmm. transmogrify right. him yeah. into anything he wanted to. I want to use it so bad for mm -hmm. my. I wanted to put it on the Team Skip website, but of course they have that that copyright thing. Yeah, that, that whole thing. Huh? And I wanted to use it anyway. I'm like, ah, I'll wait for the cease and desist order because Bill Watterson doesn't usually go after people. You see those stickers on the back of trucks. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you know Calvin's peeing on, peeing something. on a Chevy yeah. or something yeah, like exactly. that. You know, no one's getting a cease and desist letter from that. But because it's my business, my guy talked me out of it. He's like, nah, it's just not even, it's not even worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so last time we talked a little bit about, um, you know, Tommy being a being a new father and we talked about bodybuilding and how everybody was saying that, you know, basically that's that's the end of his bodybuilding career. Now that he's a dad, we talked about ways to bounce around that. We talked about ways to make sure that you are still dating your spouse and not forgetting your family while we're bodybuilding. And you just wrote an article recently that kind of coincides with a lot of this. And I believe it was titled How Not to Get Divorced During Prep or something. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I get them confused because they come out a couple months after I write them. Mm -hmm. So the one I just wrote, I'm thinking that's not the one I just wrote, but I haven't, it hasn't gone, it hasn't been published yet. It hasn't gone live. It's with my editor. That one's um, when is the dream dead? But yeah, it, it's it, look, training people for so long and being a competitor as long as I have as well not only seen it myself personally, but I've seen a lot of clients go through it. I can't tell you how many times a competitor will tell me at some point during a prep that they're going to get divorced or I'm, I'm leaving that bitch. And I have to catch them. And, and I, you know, it, it's not really my place, but I have a rapport with a lot of my clients. Uh, you guys are kind of the exception to the rule because we have a lot of parallels and, and to, to be speaking with both of you on a podcast with, two clients that it's kind of the exception to the rule. I, I consider myself friends with you guys. Yeah. You know, we hang out. You've been to my house. I've been to your, I haven't been to Devin's place yet. Yeah. You got to um, get out here. Come but up soon to enough. A, yeah. We'll go up to we have, we have cookie game. spots. We have to see or hit and hamburger spots and everything else. Sure. Um, but, but you guys are kind of the exception to the rule, but I still will talk to clients and kind of, I call it, it's, it's a Dr. Phil moment, really, Yeah. where you yeah. have that rapport and you're kind of like, look, you know, uh, you got to step back a little bit and you got to be a little insightful, even though the diet and the training, we become so, it's kind of a tunnel vision thing. And a lot of us kind of resent the people, not the people that we're with, but the position they're in where we have to remind ourselves that what we're doing is voluntary. We're doing it because we love it. This is... This is what we enjoy doing. And because you chose this endeavor, involuntarily, your spouse and everybody around you has been pulled into your endeavor too. So that's kind of the selfish component of it. So we can't lose sight of the fact or shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there's a lot of people involved who may not have the passion for what you're doing for bodybuilding and you competing like you do. So there, there should be 
an awareness there. It would be healthy if there were an awareness there so that I think it has an extra level of understanding before you say, oh, you know, and a lot of blame. There's a lot of finger pointing and a lot of blame. And while they don't understand it, they don't need to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. even if they've been around it a long time, they really they may understand a lot of it. My wife understands a lot of it. She's you know been a competitor. She's been through it. She knows what it's like to be there. But a lot of people haven't. And it also depends, too, I think, a lot on how long you've been with your spouse and whether bodybuilding was around before <laughs> yeah, exactly. your spouse. That was because, one of the areas. Yeah, in my case, that, yeah that, that, and, and that's important because bodybuilding was always there. You know, I've been, well, been married for our 31st anniversary is coming up. On the fifteenth, so that's eleven days. Oh wow! You guys Long are, time. We're uh, we're uh, we're the thirteenth. Oh no, kidding! There's yeah. a lot of August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and then it, you know what? I think... have the same birthday. That's <laughs> <laughs> well. It helps me to remember my anniversary. Actually, I'm pretty good. My wife will tell you I'm pretty good with dates like that. Kids' birthdays, and I can't remember my dad's birthday to save my ass because it's around Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving changes all the time. That's but anyway, so funny. Mine that. is too, but it's only is that because... right. So my son and my dad have the same birthday, my youngest, and then my oldest and my mother-in-law have the same birthday. Oh, okay. And sorry, we're the twenty, we're the twenty-third, not the thirteenth. Jacqueline's gonna kill me if I don't. <laughs> you can edit that out. Just edit yeah. that. So we're eight days after you guys. <laughs> yeah, I think. But again, coming back to the, you know, the spouse thing, there's a level of awareness there. And, and what's what's kind of funny, and it's not ha ha funny, but it's I told you so funny, is after the show. Once the competitor gets carbs in them and they're not thinking as, as foggily, <laughs> mm. I write so I can make up words like that. Uh, all of a sudden, they have an appreciation for what they, I would say what they put, what their spouse went through. Um, sometimes it is what they put them through, but they mm. see things a lot more clearly. Um, you guys know what it's like. There's, there's anxiety, there's stress. Especially when you're a coach, you got a lot of eyes on you. So you got a lot of support too, don't get me wrong. But you got a lot mm-hmm. of critics too. So mm-hmm. for every, you know, five people that support you, trust me, there's one there, at least one for every five who want to see you fail too. Mm-hmm. So you're under the microscope. They're keeping track of you. They want to know what's going on. And then, and then I'll, you know, a lot of times, sometimes, not a lot of times, sometimes the expectations don't like people expect more from you. Uh, I feel that way. I feel a lot of stress when it comes time to prep. It's because I've been doing it for so long. I have this this negative thought in my head that that people are going to be like, "Well, he's good for an old man. You know, he's still doing it, but you know, he's not as good as he was." And that's something that I have to come to and I have to, you know, accept too. We're all just kind of putting the best out there, you know, our best physique and our best package out there and the chips have to fall where they may. And we have to be okay with that. And when we do that, you know, we're opening ourselves up to being scrutinized. So if you don't have thick skin, you probably shouldn't be doing it anyway. True. And that's what, like I said, after the show, everybody loves everybody. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's one area that I wanted to kind of touch on is, um, you know, you've been doing this for a long time, both competitively and coaching. And so I'd really love to hear your experience on how you got into coaching um, because you are one of the first to pioneer the online coaching realm. Like prior to, um, you know, Intense Muscle Forum, there wasn't much out there. Um, You know, there was the T Nations and some of the older ones, but you were the first to really like take the lead as far as online coaching so i'd love to hear um how you got into that how it's grown to be what it is now into team skip and you know what you found to be so successful obviously you know you're well known for skip loading and so i'd love to touch on how you got into that but i mean if you just want to start us kind of from the jump like what were you doing prior how did it lead into this and you know what what was the the successful strategies to get it to where it is now. Sure. Well, I'll be honest with you. There wasn't a strategy. Uh, I'd love to say that, you know, I saw this vision and, you know, I wanted to be a pioneer. And it, and it's funny because it's an, it's an uncomfortable label for me because on the one hand, I 
kind of believe that I was one of the first ones to not only do it, but to do it and make a, a living doing it. Um, I, I transitioned from my job, a regular job, I call it, <laughs> like everybody mm -hmm. else has, mm -hmm. in 05. And I just, I, I sat my wife down one night at an Applebee's and I had my little presentation, which was a piece of notebook paper with me scribbling numbers all over it. And I was super nervous. You know, at that point we had three kids, very young, um, I'm th off the top of my head, like two and four. And the oldest was 10, 10, 11 in there somewhere. So, you know, this is kind of a, you know, we're paycheck to paycheck, you know, we're kind of, yeah, you know, I'm working with kids in juvenile detention and, and treatment. So, so not making a ton of money, enjoyed my job, but it's a, you know, it's a, it was a 30 year old job at the time. So it wasn't something that you would call a career. Let's put it, let's put it that way. And what I did was um, I kind of slid the paper over to her and, and to kind of put it in a nutshell or, you know, to paraphrase, I, I said, this is what I need to be making to be able to leave the, my current job and to be able to work from home we won't need a babysitter you know we'll save on you know gas and stuff like that I, you know i was pulling out all sorts of things <laughs> that we were going to save <laughs> mm -hmm. and she looked at the sheet like she does uh, contracts and everything else with a fine tooth comb and i'm thinking there ain't that much information there like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and what yeah. felt like an eternity and she looked up she goes well you already make this and I just kind of smiled. I'm like, I know. She's like, well, and she was completely on board. She's like, well, then why aren't you doing this? And the hang up was because I'm scared to death. I have mm -hmm. kids to feed. I have this check over here that comes in every two weeks. It's not very big. And, you know, we don't have a lot of extra money, but I'm paying the, you know, I'm paying the bills. We're paying the bills. We're, we're doing good. And so it's a difficult thing. Honestly, it was probably the scariest, one of the scariest decisions I've ever made in my life. And you guys are kind of putting your toes up to the line right now. You're going to get to that, you know, that place too. And, and the question is, when is it time? Mm -hmm. And it's not a, there isn't a time. <laughs> Basically, you just run it as long as you can run it until you just don't have the time to do both. And that's what I had done to that point. Um, so she supported me 100%. I'll tell you, one of the things that is so, you know, when people ask me, because I do get asked, I get messages on Facebook from friends that I, you know, they're friends on Facebook, but I don't even know them that well. And they're like, you know, they'll say, hey, you know, I'm having problems with my, sometimes it's women, you know, a woman, sometimes it's a, it's a man. And like, you know, I'm having problems with, and you, problems with my marriage and, you know, your marriage is so great. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, it's Facebook. Right. I'm not telling you what I don't want to tell you. You know, we right. have the same problems arguing about, you know, finances and, you know, what we're spending money on or, you know, things like that, just like everybody else. But we don't air our, our dirty laundry. So as good as it is, don't get me wrong. I have a, a great marriage and my wife is awesome. And not a lot of people can say that after, you know, 30 years. And when they do say it, half of them are lying anyway. Mm -hmm. So when you do see someone who's been married for a long time, you go, oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. You don't know that that marriage is a garbage. Because it could be. Sometimes people are just together because that's the lesser of the evils. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. people are comfortable and everything. I can I can honestly say that that's not the case for us. And the cool thing is with us is we both make enough money ourselves that we aren't together for the financial aspect of it. Now, early on, if we would have had problems, we might have laughed at each other and went, "Where are you going to go? I can't go anywhere. Yeah. Can't yeah. anywhere. You can't mm -hmm. go anywhere. You can't Been afford there. it. But but that's not the case. Yeah. So I've always had that support, which is huge. Um, not only for the training component, but it's also huge for the competitive component of it as well. It's very, very difficult to do something like competing and be 24-7 and so invested in your passion and then have your partner not invested in it. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's also very difficult to do if you're not relatively financially secure. Oh, yeah. It's outside stress your your yeah. job or your career is not stable um you know you got baggage or you got issues and we all have baggage and issues i guess but to the point where it's getting in you know in the way of things this is a highly structured highly regimented endeavor that we do to do it to do it well yep so you know as far as getting started that's a long story short because it's a very long one is i got back into competing 
in 2002 and was was really starting to get serious again in 2001. We had moved to Colorado from Michigan in 97 and we, had, we were stabilized. We had you know a couple more kids. We're kind of just getting stabilized. I don't want to stabilize, maybe even a little bored, but routine. So I started getting back into the gym and everything. I want to get back into competing. And when I did that, I got lucky. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of this is, is, you know, obviously I, you know, I have a lot of experience and, and, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm good at what I do or I, or I wouldn't be in the position that I am, but make no mistake. It always helps to have people in your corner. It helps to have the timing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, things come together when they're supposed to come together. So I had a guy that kind of, Took me under his wing. He went by Zilla. He was on the message boards because I was that the message boards were my stomping grounds. And and the, the message boards were awesome because you had to earn a reputation. I mean, literally, it was just a dog fight every day. Mm -hmm. the, the debating, the arguing, the back and forth. Um, you know, I, to this day, Dante says I'm a master of controlling trolls. <laughs> because if you come from the boards and you're a master there, social media is a cakewalk. Oh, I love so, it. I, I will, if I see you posted something new, I will click on it just because I'm hoping nine times out of 10, it's you making a statement, someone talking about it, and then you just shoving it right back in their face when they're trolling. Yeah. And, and it's a little bit more, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm far more reserved in my older age, uh, arguably a little more mature, which says a lot about my maturity. 20 years ago. <laughs> um, uh, it's just more um, calculated, I guess. I look at it these days that I hand the rope to the person and let them continue <laughs> to embarrass themselves. Right. And I let everybody else decide who's reading the back and forth to, to, to decide who the fool is. Yeah. And that's Versus what I love because you're very feel, articulate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it used to be that I had to point out that you were a fool, and I and I was I thought I was very good at it. Man, I cannot keep this ear in. <laughs> I'm just battling here, um, but yeah, I, I've kind of changed my my strategy <laughs> mm -hmm. to borrow a term from Mr. Bush. But you know, over the years, but you know, again, that's the maturation process, I guess. But getting into it, like I said, Zilla took me under his wing. Basically, he had started what was called shitloading, and all it was is it was a peaking. Um, method for the last few days getting on stage where you just basically dry it out. You were already really lean. You got dry. This is the short version, but mm -hmm. you dry it out. You get, you know, you're after you're very lean and you add a bunch of crap food from pizza and everything. And you fill out big time and you stay dry. And it, it was basically, it was based on the premise of everybody saying <clears throat> how good they look the next day after the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I looked like this today. The show. After you were already dry, you hadn't spilled yet, you went out and ate a bunch of garbage and your muscles filled out, you got even drier, uh, you know, because the, the muscle needs to scavenge for water. So he kind of took me under his wing because I was struggling with my diet at that point. Like I was so depleted that I would go off my diet and I would eat, you know, donuts and a burger and I'd be like, oh my God, you know, I, I look insane. Like what's going on? So we kind of, we toyed with it a little bit. I did a show in 2002 and it worked out incredibly well. And as soon as I did that, Everybody was hitting me up for advice, like left and right, like blowing up my message, uh, you know, message box, inbox on, uh, you know, the message board. So this goes on for like a year and I, I hit up Zilla, still don't know what the guy's real name is. <laughs> and I told him, I said, hey, you know, why the guy's name was Wild and he had this this moniker, this this saying that at the bottom of all his posts it said team wild but his last name was spelled w-y-l-d-e and i thought oh that's kind of cool you know team wild you can kind of play on the, you know the words a little bit cool mm -hmm. and uh nobody else did so he was doing prep i mean i wasn't the first online prep guy but when i started getting all those messages and stuff and i was putting in so much time you know helping people and i liked it because i'm like oh you know I'm, I'm popular like everybody wants to know what i what I'm doing. And, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's some, there, there was, there used to be some, some pride in that. Yeah. But then I thought, you know, and I asked Zill, I said, Hey, you know, can I, 
could I charge people like, you know, I don't know, like a hundred bucks a month. He's like, absolutely. He's like, I'll back you for credibility because remember on the message boards, it was essentially anonymous. No one knew your name. When you posted pictures, you chopped your head off because you didn't want the DEA to bust your door down, you know, because yeah. you said you used yeah. D-ball and tests and stuff like that. For your that. two so, bottles of tests you have. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I built her, I started to build a reputation. I started to make a few bucks and the money was nice because it was kind of, it was a side hustle before there was a side hustle. Okay. But I didn't know that because nobody knew that term at that time. But what it did do is it paid for my, it paid for bodybuilding. bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It paid for bodybuilding. And it, it, what it did was it, it took a little bit of stress off of me because I thought, well, I'm not spending money that I don't have mm -hmm. on bodybuilding versus, you know, paying my bills or feeding my kids, you know, they're not Even going without. That you so, do have. Um, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It, but, you know, it, and I look at it the same way is, oh, there goes that latency issue. Um, even spending <laughs> money that you, that you do have, um, but it's not coming out of that account. Right. And, you, and you that makes, who, uh, it takes right. away such a relief to say, hey, I'm I'm still paying for this but none of it is going to affect our bills, our groceries, right. any of our overhead um, mm -hmm. to do what I want to do. Right. And that's what? fair. If you think about it, it's a fair way to approach it because if you're, I mean, look, you know, I understand that this is me looking back, but I may not have admitted it then, but I can admit it now. If I was pulling money that was needed for bills and for, and I would say this to anybody listening, if you're pulling bill, if pulling money from bills Stop. that's needed to feed your kids and pay bills and everything else, that's not, that's just not fair. That's the epitome of selfishness. As a junior USA is in 2009, the guy who was going to be the clear winner, he was a bona fide badass of the light heavies. I overheard him before the finals tell the guy who was oiling him, I'm assuming it was his friend, that he didn't know how he was going to pay rent when he got back home. And I remember thinking to myself, man, you're a badass. And I was thinking earlier how awesome it would be to be in that position and dominate this class. And I'm like, no, it's really not. Like, I'm going home to my kids, my beautiful home, you know, my business that I'm <clears throat> continuing to build at that time was, you know, just taking off. It started blowing up in like 2007 and 2009 was junior, you know, junior USA. So, there's there's a lot of people doing it. It's disappointing, and I understand dreams. I understand passion. I understand sacrifice, but you sacrificing for your dreams is one thing. Everybody else around you sacrificing for your dreams is, is a completely different, uh, and in my opinion, so it's not any of my business, so, so do what you want to do, but I'm still giving my opinion, and I think that it's not the best. I don't think it's a very good decision. Mm -hmm. No. And, and you can have both. Um, you can. It takes longer. Right. It takes more work. Um, but if you really want it, you have to find a way to make bodybuilding affordable, um, especially when you start getting into the higher level of bodybuilding. It starts getting expensive very quick, especially if you want to travel, things like that. Sure. You, want, you want to use high-end supplements and things that actually work. Um, it was actually when I was a kid, I think I heard Jay Leno say it and he said, you should always have two jobs. One is going to pay your bills and keep mm -hmm. the lights on. The other one is for half the stuff you want and half goes into retirement. I like that. So yeah, he said, you should always nice. have two jobs. This one keeps the train rolling. This one is for future retirement and what you want right now, the fun stuff, you know, that dude's got like 9,000 cars. So, yeah, you know, so when I heard him say that, I'm like, man, I always need to have two sources of income at all times, you know, yep. just find a way to have cash flow. And, you know, as you get older, that can be investments and things like that. But um, we all train younger guys. And when I find out a younger guy is running close to not being able to pay his bills that month, but he wants to buy X, Y, and Z supplement or whatever it may be, that's a no-go for me. I don't, yeah. I don't care if it gives you an extra 3% muscle mass or some extra look on stage that maybe if we didn't use it, you know, you could have been a little better. 
I don't care because I don't want them to be that guy that, let's say, takes top three in the show and comes home with an empty checking account, empty savings account. Mm -hmm. And that's a stressful way to start an off season. Or an empty apartment you know, because your spouse yeah. isn't there. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or an empty apartment. Or, or, you know, we all get this way too. And I know you have all felt this. There's that time in prep where you're like, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to do something else. I'm just going to focus on body. <laughs> like, I think we all, we get so hyper invested where we just want to get rid of everything and just dial in this tunnel of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it's necessary. You know, you have to be dialed in. Um, but you have to remember to not let everything go because there is an end to that tunnel once you're out yeah. of it and nothing's around you. I mean, the sport's already quite lonely. You know, when you're going through a prep, I I want to guarantee that you guys have felt lonely at some point. Oh, yeah. When you wake up for that fasted cardio and, you know, you're just staring at the the machine and, you know, the hamster wheel and you're yeah. like, man, this kind of feels lonely. <laughs> well, I, think, I think that's where a lot of the resentment comes from when the competitor gets mad. That's mm -hmm. why you have to be pretty insightful. And I think that that happens, obviously, with experience and with, with age, with wisdom. Um, you, over time, hopefully, realize that, again, you know, you asked for all this. It's yeah. all it's all voluntary. Mm -hmm. and, and, again, assuming or expecting your spouse or the people around you who support you to understand it 100%. You know, I always tell people, I, I've been doing this a long time. I've trained for for 40 years, I, I um, and, and of course, um, Linus now wants to be very <laughs> in the background. I apologize. You're good. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's incredibly distracting, especially when I have OCD and was never diagnosed with it anyway. We love Linus, um, so it's all good. Skip has yeah, like eight cat, skips the cat. <laughs> uh, of the competitive for the record, I have five, but I would only have two if my three daughters did not bring one, bring one home, sneak it into the house. Yeah. And then get, you know, get it to be part of the family and then leave to go start a family, not take the cat with them. But anyway, I digress. Yet and again. they're all awesome cats. So they, yeah, yeah, they are, yeah. definitely a, a house of cats. But um, yeah, it, it, you know, that's the whole thing. It's just I think it's just an awareness of knowing that that this is what you ask for. You know, careful what you wish for sort of mm -hmm. thing. But the longer you do it, I think people tend to put it in perspective more. And I, I know I have. And it helps the people that are around you after you do spend some time doing it, because then they know what to expect. They know that when you're, as an example, when you're just quiet, you're not mad. You're just quiet. Mm. You, you, you sometimes just don't want to talk because it's just so laborious. Or if they mm. don't hear you and they say, huh. We Right. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God, my favorite word. Yeah, what? It, it, what? it could get a little. It could get a little <laughs> testing. But uh, would yeah, you but, like, say? Like, um, go ahead. Would, would you say it's important to each time when you start a prep, have that conversation with your family or with your wife. Listen, prep starts next week. Um, once I hit that twelve week mark, I might start to. You, you, even if they've seen it before, you just maybe gently remind them, you know, things are getting hard. Maybe mention that. Do you think that's worth doing? Is oh, that something absolutely. I mean, the more communication, the better. I would even go so far as to say, and, and I'm not implying that you wouldn't think this, you know, yourself, but I wouldn't even wait till a week. The other thing I would do is I, I would approach your spouse and be more like, this is what I want to do. I'm thinking about starting this prep. Uh, and this sounds a little a little manipulative i understand that but almost like you're asking for permission versus it's, telling them what you're doing I because do. okay yeah because it, yeah. it can be yeah. you know on the one hand you're kind of like well i can i know in my marriage i can do what i want to do because that's how our marriage works my wife can do what she wants to do and right. we, we come together and we support each other and at the same time i would never want to come into a prep and go hey i'm starting to prep next week just because she does right. know what's coming that there isn't going to be as much go out fun i'm not going to be as energetic mm -hmm. i don't like to walk around uh you know and kind of just meander downtown i live downtown west palm i don't want to walk around when I'm, you know, <laughs> low on energy, if you tell me where we're going, I will walk to where we're going, you know, those yeah. types of things. But if you include 
And this sounds it's, really bad, but no, almost it doesn't because it's a respect here. thing. Yeah. yeah. What I, I guess what I what I think sounds bad is even though you know what you're gonna do, and even if you have that permission and you have that relationship, it's still courteous and respectful right. to have that conversation almost literally just asking so that you're on the you're on the same page. I mean, after all, what what's your you know, what's your relationship? based on there may be some reason maybe my wife had plans to go do something and it was on her brain and you know oh man i really wanted to go you know to bora bora i thought we were going you know for yeah. our wedding anniversary and you're like mm -hmm. oh shit you know so yeah it's it's like when you know amanda and i decided to start trying right to have a child and i had a show kind of picked out since the prior year and she wasn't pregnant yet and I'm like, listen, like, are you okay right. with me starting this prep? Because, you know, it could be a factor and things like that. And um, she said, yeah, like, we're good to go. And then, you know, luckily everything worked out. But, um, you know, I felt that she deserved to have a say in that because, they don't sign up for it, but they're definitely a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they get dragged into it regardless if they want to or not. Um, they have to live with you and, you know, they they have to deal with the emotions that come with it and everything like that. Well, um, it's a great example because it, it can happen to anybody. And think about it. If she would have said, you know, like, oh, my God, Tommy, like, this is our first kid. Like, I haven't been through this before. I know you, you would have taken that into consideration because you don't want to. And I know Devin too. He will make those decisions with his family and he's going to make the decision that's in the best interest of his family. And mm -hmm. if that means that he has to wait or he has to, you know, at that point, not do ex exactly, you know, on the time frame that he wants to do, he's going to do it. You know, I have a, and it's funny, and it's probably part of the reason that, that I do have those parallels with guys like, you too, mm -hmm. uh, you know, versus everybody versus other clients and stuff is because I just really appreciate that in the industry that we're in, the vast majority of people are so self-centered, narcissistic that relationships mm -hmm. don't, even if they do last, they're not typically very high quality relationships. And you guys have that. And it's because the priority is your relationship first and bodybuilding second. It might be a damn close second, and that's fine. Well, but and it's, it's but the family is first. And it's along the lines of, well, we chose our wife. I I chose to be with Amanda. So that was my first choice. And then of course bodybuilding is a choice too. But my first choice is my wife. So she needs to be on board with that. And luckily I knew this before I even married my wife that she's cool. Yeah, <laughs> and like, exactly. you know, otherwise, honestly, I wouldn't have married her. Right. right. You well, get to pick who you marry. You right. know, and, and bodybuilding aside, you know, our relationship, and I'm sure Tommy, yours is probably very similar uh, to like what Skip said. I don't have to check in with Jacqueline. I go do mm -hmm. my, th I could go do my thing. She could go do her thing, but mm -hmm. we check in with each other out of the fact of a better communication and b like you said she might have something planned if if the boys hit me up and they're like hey you want to come golfing with us saturday let me check with jacqueline just to make sure we don't have anything going on if not i'm there and mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll give me shit hey we're gonna go do this make sure you get your permission slip signed da, 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 da. and i'm like look just because some of you guys go and do and the funny thing is on the back end um, yes you know, you see some of the strains in those relationships. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas it's like, it takes two minutes for me to say, hey, do we have anything going on next Saturday? No? Cool. Hey, do you mind if I go do X with so-and-so? No, not at all. Do your thing. All right. Exactly. But she appreciates the fact that I ask her just like today. She just got back from going and playing soccer with a friend. And she, every week, I've even told her, because Sundays, as we all know, is might as well just be national load day. Um, right. I, I get my yeah. load, you know, I do my skip loading. I get all my stuff ready for the week. I like, I'm at home and I'm, I'm hanging out with the boys. It's boys day. I take the boys. We go give Jacqueline a break for a couple hours. 
and I've even told her every go every Sunday, please go have fun, mm -hmm. go play soccer. Mm -hmm. Every week she asks, do you mind if I go play with Andrea? Right. Not at all. Yep. Go do your thing. I, I ask, um, I ask Amanda, hey, you know, like, hey, you know, can I train after, you know, would you rather I train after meal three yep. or meal four? What can I help you with? You know, and she kind of knows when I'm eating and things like that. Um, so sometimes I don't ask her, but I give her options, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's one step, you know, it's, it's still that communication, though, because I do the same thing. Yeah. My Fridays are pretty open to where I don't go to my nine to five. I keep that completely mm -hmm. open for the training business. So I do have a lot more flexibility. And she'll usually ask me, hey, what time do you plan on being home Friday? Knowing damn well, I'm always home after I train at 2.30 by 4 o'clock. But the answer is always the same. What time do you need me home? I was planning on coming home after I train at 2.30, so like 4. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I, ha I was, I was going to try and do this and this. Is there any way you could you could come home at X? Yeah, no problem. I'll just train after meal 2 instead of meal 3. No problem. Mm -hmm. well, I, can, I can throw one extra one. You guys know my schedule. I do client work from essentially midnight to 5 or 6 a.m. Yeah. I still work during the day, but it's more loose ends. It's social media. It's YouTube. It's writing articles. It's podcasts, things like that. And part of that, the, the big part of that is because raising we raised four kids over the course of almost, what, 25, 28 years. So mm -hmm. that just happened to be – it's not like I – like I, I'm like, man, I just really want to stay up all night and work and then <laughs> yeah. sleep during the day because it does impinge a little bit on the weekends a little bit because I am certainly not getting up at 8 a.m. I've only been in bed for two hours. Right, right. But that's the trade off based on you know, the your your family dynamic. And, you know, yes, it could be argued that I only have a 19 year old now at home. The other three have their families and everything else. But after you do that for 20 years. That's the pattern, and I'm used to it, and my clients are used to it, and it actually works out incredibly well because, I touched on this earlier, I have undiagnosed OCD, so when it is very quiet and there's not, you know, trains and, and sirens and, and, and people honking their horn and, and things like that, I can get a lot more done. And again, that's just coming back to, you know, the, well, even you touched on this, Devin, flexibility, which you guys will see. When you transition, I say if, but I think it's more when, to to just doing the training, you're going to have a lot of flexibility. And, and, you know, it's funny because sometimes I'll sit back and I'll be like, even though I did it years ago, it's like I have forgotten. How do people do this when, when both parents work regular jobs? How do they have time to bodybuild or do anything outside of bodybuilding I, I used to even think, too, I'd, I'd take the kids because our kids were in every freaking sport and That's travel nice. leagues and everything else. And that was part of my thing was I get in there, the dentist appointments, the doctor's appointments, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I would look around and I think, God, how blessed am I not only to, to have the flexibility with my business, but my kids wouldn't be able to do this stuff right. if I had that rigidity of doing that that nine to five or that three to 11 or that 12 to 12. It's, it's difficult. So when you make that transition, it does help with the family dynamic at mm -hmm. home big mm -hmm. time because then you have really almost total control over your your schedule. You can completely revamp it if you want to or need to. One, one thing I want to touch on that I just want to remind people of, all three of us still have emotional conversations with our partners. And we talk about real things and not just X's and O's because there can be a time where all of a sudden your relationship starts becoming logistics of, okay, who's picking up who, right. who's taking who to soccer? When are you going to be home? Can you go to the grocery store and get this? And just like a gentle reminder to people, because I've caught myself doing it. Um, you have to, have those relationship conversations too about just whatever you know maybe maybe talk about future together you know just lame stuff like that that we put on the back burner because we're already in the relationship and it's like you have to remember when you guys first started dating what'd you talk about you know you didn't right. talk about who's picking up who and you know did you feed the dog and you know things like that yeah. um 
So all three of us are very good at doing that. And that's just a reminder to the viewers that, yeah, we're asking for permission from our wives and things like that, but we're also having real conversations with them and spending that actual time continuing to build that relationship. So I thought that was worth mentioning mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people go through it where your relationship starts feeling like a roommate type thing. No question. We right. went eight years mm -hmm. doing something similar and we had yeah. only maybe gone out three times together. Let me tell you something. And I don't want to say it was lucky, but thank God we had such a solid relationship because that is a direct path at mm -hmm. some point, depends on how long the path is, mm -hmm. but that's a direct point. You're heading, you're just, it's a, it's a, there's, it's like a fork in the road and you guys are going in different directions yep. and eventually you're just, you know, that fork continues to fork out. You're just nowhere near each other. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because when that transition happened that I was able to get out of my regular job yeah, the fear and the, and the, you know, I was scared, but man, did it open up a lot to where we did have more time. And the, our kids knew they're like, no, we're not doing anything with mom and dad on Saturday night. We're going to have a babysitter because that's, that's mom and dad's night. But then all day Sunday, it's, you know, everybody's at the house. Mm -hmm. We have friends over, they have their friends over. It's I'll say it's a big party. It's a big skip load party, but still, <laughs> yeah, it, you so know, everybody's together, you know, there's fun times. We, you know, we took our kids and do so many things. They still yep. talk about all the, the trips, all the snowboarding, all the snowmobiling, all the yep. line dancing lessons. I mean, we were just we had we were season ticket holders for the Rockies. There were so many different things that we did that honestly, without the the ability to flex and and without without the business, I don't know that that would have happened. Not only financially, but due to the lack of the flexibility. I guess it could have still happened on the weekend, but the point is, is you guys are headed in that direction. So when you do have to ask yourself that question, I just, I, I, I don't have many regrets in my life, but I think back sometimes and I think how fortunate and happy that I am that I took the risk because I said it at that time and I still believe it now. Just take the risk. It, it, it it, it, you know, if someone's listening and they're not even going into training or whatever, it's not training related. It's anything related. Anything, you, know, you, anything. you hear people say all the time, like it, they would do this to be in Colorado. They do it here a little bit too, but man, I would love to live there. Oh, it's so beautiful. But you know, I'm just, no, just get up and, and <laughs> yeah. move. Like if that's what you want to do, do it. Because if you fall on your ass, you can always go back, you can always go back. but you're going to have those. You could potentially have those regrets of not taking that risk, whether it's a move. Uh, like a move, like you're moving your home, you're moving to yeah. another state or, or taking a different job. Oh, it's, it's always scary outside of the box. The box is a comfort zone, but not much mm -hmm. happens in there. Mm -hmm. It isn't predictable and arguably pretty boring. Yeah. So take the risk, man, so especially while you're younger. It's, it's easier. It's easy to take the risk but it's easier not to, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's easier to stay, you know, right, out, right outside oh. of that line. And sure. um, yeah. And yeah, I think that's very true. Do you guys remember uh, Zach Evanish? Do you remember him at all? Mm -mm. He was a, he was a sports trainer, like uh, kind of like uh, JL Holtzworth. He trains younger kids for um, athletics, football, baseball, things like that. His name was Zach Evanish. And he always said, go before you're ready. Yeah. So, you know, nice. everyone has like, and a lot of the times it was based off training. Like if you're doing a dynamic squat workout or something and you're trying to get your reps ready, he's like, no, just get under the bar and go. Right. Well, and, and taking but, that leap is what makes you ready. Because yes, if you don't, right. you're, you're always standing on the edge of the cliff looking to jump. You're never ready. Who's ready? You're never, you're never ready. You never have no. enough money. It's never nope. the right timing. Never. No, and had we so, not, we literally just broke, broke as when we mm -hmm. moved to Colorado. Mm -hmm. The first three weeks, we were eating peanut butter sandwiches and oranges. <laughs> that was I Jack. would take, I would take our youngest, well, our only daughter at that time, I guess, not just youngest, but Taylor, to my wife's job. She was working at a place called uh, I, had, I can't think of it now, but it was a kind of a bar that had pool tables. It was like a college type of bar, and they had oh, a Michigan. Pizza, uh, no, actually, in Colorado. Oh, that was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had just gotten to Colorado, and uh, I would take her for the for the uh, pizza buffet because she was a waitress, 
and I could take Taylor in and we could eat for free. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and obviously that's not a bodybuilding food. That's not something I would normally eat, but you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, we had, we, uh, we went and got a loan for some ridiculous amounts of personal loan for a couple thousand dollars to get uh, a bed or, or her bed, which was a bunk bed, mm -hmm. a couch and an armoire and a TV. And that's mm -hmm. what we had in our apartment. And we just, we built from there. And I know it sounds, if anybody's listening and they're like 25, they're like, oh, now, now the old guy's, you know, going to yell, get off my lawn here in five minutes. I understand right. that that isn't how things work these days. You know, you stay at home and you build up a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little, not a, not a nest egg, but, you know, a bit of money. And then you move out mm -hmm. and then you complain about how bad rent is, but you got three people rooming with you and you have fun. And that's kind of how you build in. But you usually have these, you don't have a beat up car with a headlight hanging out of it. Right. You know, right. you don't have a, a phone that is, you know, a flip phone. You, you, people have nice shit even when they're broke these days. We didn't have that crap. Right. You just kind of may do. But that's the whole point. I like that. Just do it. Just, just do it. You're just ready. get up and make the move. It'll either work or you'll fall on your ass. And this is what we said. If we, drop, if we just fall on our ass, we'll be back in Michigan before Taylor has to start kindergarten anyway. Yep. We were there a day. And I'm not being dramatic. We were there a day and I just went, I'm never leaving here. Now, mm -hmm. we left 23 years later, but it was after we <laughs> raised the kids. And we were just kind of, I don't want to say done with it, but it was the next move. And and we came here because of my wife's job. My wife's mm -hmm. career has, it's just infinite here. That she had hit, kind of hit the ceiling in Denver. And this this market has been very, very good to her. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge Zig Ziglar fan. And I'll never forget in, yeah. high, in high school, um, it was high school communications. We had to pick a book that was related to business and communications. And I grabbed a Zig Ziglar book, honestly, because it was the smallest book. And it was just a, <laughs> it, was, it was a book of his quotes. So it was like this big because it just had a ton of yeah. quotes in it. But the but one he, that stuck he, he out to me. the man for quotes. Oh, he yeah. The him. one yeah. that stuck out to me to this day, and I still tell my clients, is that he said, if you wait for every light to turn green before you leave for the grocery store, you will starve. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so that's one that I've always stuck with. But yeah. I think that's some really good information on, on again, whether it's bodybuilding or, excuse me, whether it's coaching, whether it's training, whether you're just looking at switching careers. I think all of this information is pertinent regardless. And the biggest thing is just getting outside of your comfort comfort zone, taking that leap, and just putting your eggs in that basket. Because in the event you fall, you can always go back. I want to make sure that we have some time for questions, because I know we got it a little bit in. So we will mm -hmm. probably jump into a little bit of the X's and O's. Um, so, Tommy, if you want to pull those up, um, we can go through some of those. Yeah, Skip, you only get one minute to answer this one. All Let's right, go. it's like you it's like you talked to Scott or Scott reached out no, to you no, and no, said, no, gotta put no. a time limit on this guy. No, <laughs> I I will give you all day, but I know I got the can of worms that this question is. So I want you to pretend we're entering an elevator together. Okay. We're we're going to the 30th floor. Okay. And you have that elevator ride to answer this question. Okay, for me. fair enough. Okay. We're what getting out is, on the first floor or the 29th? Right. We're getting out on the 29th, yeah. Okay. What, what is skip loading? Oof. Okay. Um, have you pushed the button for the 30th floor yet? No, <laughs> right now. Okay. Um, skip loading essentially is a method that manipulates the metabolism to continue to have someone progress and lose body fat by taking, I say one day, it could be one meal, two meal, three meal, but it's literally done usually once a week and they're high calorie, uh, high carb, predominantly carb dominant, but they still have fat and protein in them. And it manipulates the metabolism. So that you then you lose body fat. It started as a peaking method for bodybuilding. And I stumbled across the fact that, wait a minute, this is, this is a, an incredibly efficient and productive dieting method. That's only like the 17th floor. Do we have time to talk about cats or something? <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna just run through these because they're all sure. skip load related. Okay. Um, and you can just rail these off because they're pretty simple and okay. you've answered them a, a, a lot in the manifesto and things like that. Um so really this is just uh, I was giving the guys crap that were asking them because it's like 
you guys have read the manifesto. You've seen every one of Skip's podcasts, and you're still asking these laborious questions. But and we'll um, we'll do this. We'll get Skip back on, and we will mm -hmm. talk just more X's and O's. Sure. Yep. Yeah, perfect. True. Yeah. Um, your experience with trying different types of foods for both diet and skip loading. Um, he's talking about the difference between things like red meat and chicken. Um, different types of carb sources for skip loading. Um, yeah, the protein like really doesn't. The protein really doesn't matter a whole lot. It comes down to tolerance and arguably fat levels. I mean, if you're, you know, if you have something like a, you know, a really fatty beef in there, you know, that's not going to be as effective because you don't having fat in a skip load meal is fine, but you don't want it to have so you don't want to have so much that it gets in the way mm -hmm. of you taking in more carbs the, mm -hmm. the priority should be on carbohydrate glycogen replenish so that you can get something out of it from a from a you know for the couple days after you skip load for your training and stuff like that fill out a little bit uh you know just have more energy for a couple days um but but when it comes to carb sources a lot of it is just tolerance yeah. i have found that a lot of people tolerate the vast majority of people tolerate rice better than anything else. Rice and potatoes, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, there are plenty of people who tolerate wheat, but I will tell you this. There are a, a ton of people who think they tolerate wheat until they go without wheat for a few months, and then they come back to wheat, and they go, oh, man, yeah. I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, my waist is this big, right. and now, now it's this big. I don't yep. know what happened. Yeah, well, even... I've got the shits. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll even say to that point, I have my usually my my regular load on Sunday is almost always a breakfast meal. And mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, it's pancakes. And then I'll yep. do some toast. We started making our bread fresh. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, I can eat probably a half loaf of fresh made bread and have zero digestion issues. Or like today, mm -hmm. I think I ate probably three quarters of a small sourdough loaf zero mm -hmm. digestion issues yeah. i eat four to five pieces of bread from a store and it's bloat city yeah 100 mm -hmm. yep. percent. And, and for anybody out there who thinks no i don't have any issues with gluten you may not well i would argue that you do but you just don't know it. it's much yeah. like lactose just but, because you don't shit your pants when you you know <laughs> drink milk doesn't mean that you're lactose tolerant it means that you tolerate it better than most so i would i would challenge that person to do it because i was so if something said gluten free on it, I'd be like, oh, that's for people who don't, you know, they're they're <laughs> vegans and, and right. And, and I was forced to because they were oatmeal, oatmeal raisin cookies at Whole Foods. It was the only option. I'm like, mm, these are pretty good. <laughs> you know, they they didn't taste any different. But I will tell you this: here's your challenge for anybody listening: take gluten out of your diet for mm -hmm. three months, and I then did come. It. And I'm not kidding. Tell me that you don't notice a difference at that point. Because it's just, it, I don't want to say it's not going to happen, but it's going to happen so infrequent that I would almost argue with you and go, "Now nah, you just don't want to admit it. Because in your heart of hearts, yeah. you have an expectation with the ceiling fan. Remember, well, I always yeah. remember the ceiling fan. Those are your most honest conversations when you're lying down at night and it's just you and the ceiling fan. Because you can bullshit everybody else on social media, your friends mm -hmm. to their face. But that ceiling fan, you and that ceiling fan know the truth because that's when you're the most honest with yourself when you're dealing with your thoughts before you go to bed. Yeah, and the and the poisons in the dose, right? Um, so yeah, maybe you can have a gluten meal during the week for your 50, 60 carb meal, but then you go to load on right. a 300 carb load meal because yeah. I know all of us have been 300, 400 plus carbs in one load meal before. Sure. And if a lot of that's coming from gluten, man, that's a heavy dose of gluten yep. that you might not be ready for. Um, so this next one kind of ties into what I just said, and that's determining the size, the actual meal size of the skip load. Um, I got this from you is for my clients. I put time limits mm -hmm. on the start of the meal to the end of the meal. The max I give people is 30 minutes. And when I give them 30 minutes, it's because I know they're not eating enough because gotcha. they will detail what they're eating. So I give them a little extra time to get some extra food in. Um, but then I know guys like Devin and I can eat. We have mm -hmm. extremely high appetites. Yeah, I have um, to hold myself back half the time. 100%. Like, like today, I told Skip, I was like, hey, you know, we're getting three weeks out from, from Pittsburgh. I'm going to pull back on, usually I'll do like a cookie. In the past, it was like, 
I would eat two to three eight ounce cookies throughout a, a load day and have zero issues. But obviously, over time on the physique, it just like gluten, your body processes and breaks it down different. So yeah. I've been pulling back. I did have a small sample, but I nine times out of 10 will have to make less food just simply so I do. And I don't even want to say overeat because I will still eat a lot You're of You're still food. hungry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I will typically have to hold myself back. But anyway, to your point, how do you usually regulate that for clients? Well, there's a couple ways. Uh, and you guys have noticed this too, I'm sure. When you're at one meal, that's different. Because you know you can eat and you can arguably eat a little bit past your satiated level and go, okay, maybe that was a little too much, but I'm good. But when you get to two and you only have a three-hour window... It doesn't take long to figure out, oh, man, I'm still full for the second meal. Like, I got to get this meal in. And you get full very quickly because you're, I mean, you got gastric emptying. You still got food in your intestines. There, It's just taking up space. And that's where you become what, what I call the heavy breather. And if you're breathing heavy, you're, you know, you're taking deep so breath. Your you're, you're, too, you're too full. <laughs> so what happens is a lot of times that second meal is important much more so than any other because once you get to three and four you're already doing the same thing that you were when you moved to your second meal you have to then that's what gives you it kind of makes you pace yourself versus just the one meal that's why arguably two meals is better than one because right. one you can just make you can just you could stuff yourself and go oh, okay i'm not really stuck and then when you go to two you eat the same amount of food for the first meal then you realize okay I was eating too much on the first meal, so you have to cut it back. The other one is uh, blood glucose levels. If yep. you eat that meal and it's so big that two and a half or three hours later when you go to eat again, you have a blood glucose level of 150. Mm -hmm. you, there, at that point, there's no sense refeeding unless you're, you know, then we get into the, the other stuff, the minutia as far as insulin sure. and things like that. But yeah. that becomes more, uh, more complicated. But to, to keep it simple as far as just the meals, Blood glucose will tell you a lot because if you still have high blood glucose levels, there's no sense of eating. Your body's still processing what you put in it for the last meal. Yeah. And we can all agree, and we've all done this, do not trade hydration for food. That's right. Because it's very tempting to do when you're incredibly hungry. And it's, it's twofold. Not only does it take up space in there that food could be going in, but it also slows digestion yeah. and gastric emptying as well. So it's a double-edged sword. You have to be hydrated. My best advice is, and you, I think you guys already do this, but, you know, because we worked, I've worked with both of you for quite a while, but mm -hmm. you get that water in, you know, I, I, I tell all my clients, try not to drink very much fluid with your meals. Yep. Drink mm -hmm. it in between your meals. Yep. Yep. That way you're, the, the water doesn't sit there and not only mix with your food, and not hydrate juice quickly, but it also dilutes the stomach acid as well. Yes. So it makes the digestion arguably not as optimal too. Mm -hmm. So it, again, there's a lot of double-edged swords here. Devin, you've got uh, 10 minutes and we can knock out just these last skip load ones. And then I, all, my, all my other ones are training. I was going to say, um, we might have are to you? wrap here. I got to... Okay. I got a birthday thing here in a minute. Um, no problem. You, are you putting family ahead of this podcast? Yeah, see, How this is, dare you I have your it, priorities right? on? <laughs> um, but we will get Skip back on. Um, we'll we'll answer. We'll keep those same questions. We will make sure we get back through them. Um, let's go. Uh, well, first of all, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if people want to get a hold of you, Skip, how would they do that? Well, you can email me at teamskip1 at gmail.com. The teamskip.com website has just finished. Looks uh, I do have a testimonial on there from one of my clients. I didn't ask Tommy. I don't really like the guy. Oh, <laughs> shit. Is he still on? <laughs> I know. Um, but check that out. It's brand new. I'm excited about it because I really like the look. Uh, but you know what? I got to throw, throw out a little plug for my YouTube video or my YouTube channel because I did get that going again, putting a lot of time and a lot of money into that so we're we're getting about four or five videos up oh we're getting four or five videos ready to go so that we're ahead so that i can keep relatively consistent with at least one solid uh video per week and then throw in on top of that what i call on the daily which will be kind of just rants and fun and you know uh, daily type things kind of like what paul barnett does sometimes mm -hmm. where he's just talking about things and <clears throat> kind of gives you a glimpse into the life of 
you know, the boring life, I guess, uh, of, of skip and bodybuilding and things like that. But there should be, there should be a lot of, still should be some information in there and, and some gems, hopefully. Perfect. Tommy, how can the people get a hold of you? Uh, TommyJohnCoaching.com. Um, you can find me at TommyJohnCoaching on Instagram. Uh, my YouTube is, I'm just putting raw training footage on there. Um, so I've been putting almost every workout on there. It's very raw, unedited. You can hear me breathing heavy and coughing and burping and all sorts of stuff. Um, I throw some cues in. So they're helpful if you can get through the rawness. Eventually, I'll have them edited by someone. Um, and then uh, the Chase Science Discord is where I do a lot of my coaching out of. So Perfect. And then for anybody that's interested in information, training, uh, whatever the case may be, you can get me at nxtlevel-training.com or email me at devin at nxtlevel-training.com. Instagram's dgrow39. Got a lot of informational stuff up on there. Um, we will get Skip back on and we will jump more into the X's and O's, Skip loading and, and all that fun stuff. Um, but for this go around, we again, we wanted to peel the curtains back and go beyond. He's been in, a, like he said, 30 plus years in a marriage, um, you know, Five five kids, four, you, three four, grandkids though. Four kids, four that he claims, yeah, four yeah, that he exactly. knows about with three grandkids yeah. and uh, and growing. So definitely an amazing person to have on here. Great mentor, great coach. Uh, make sure you guys go check him out. And then we'll we'll I want to get into your alter ego as we lead up to the uh, Olympia as well. Um, so we'll have to discuss that, but we'll get you back on. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate and it. Let me inject one thing real yes. quick. And that is this for the listeners. I have been in this industry for a very, very long time. I've been training for a long time. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, all that sort of stuff. As good a coach as I am, feel free to reach out to me, but both Devin and, uh, Tommy both know their shit. They have worked with me for a long time. And I'm telling you, they don't hesitate to hire them if you're thinking, uh, Skip's probably expensive. I am expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work with you. As you should. But be. don't hesitate to, to reach out to, to Devin and Tommy because they know not only skip loading, but they know the vast majority of my methodology, like the back of their hand. So and not only that, but the other important stuff, the minutia, the rapport, they genuinely will they'll not only pay attention and be a relatively obsequious, obsequious trainer, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. And I don't back a lot of people. You guys, you two know that the listeners may not know that I, there are a lot of very mediocre trainers. They get way too much credit. Um because when you peel back the curtain on a lot of these guys, they aren't doing anything any different than anybody else. Right. So feel feel free and have confidence reaching out to either one of these guys. Thank I you. I appreciate that. Well. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that does it for this episode of Beyond the Bar, and we will catch you guys on the next one. See you later.